The Nintendo Switch has been a very successful system, and with success comes a lot of games. A lot of different game companies want to put their games on systems, and we've seen a bunch of great Nintendo Switch games, whether we're talking about games like Super Mario Odyssey, whether we're talking about games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, or Doom. There's been a lot of great, fantastic games available on the Nintendo Switch. But on the flip side, there's also been a lot of bad games for the Nintendo Switch, and for some reason, I seem to enjoy covering them. Maybe I'm just a glutton for punishment or something. But take a look at a game like Troll and I. This game was just absolutely terrible. I thought the mechanics sounded interesting, but it was just really, really bad. WWE 2K18, arguably the worst retail release for the Nintendo Switch. It didn't even really work half the time, but you know, it was a game and it was wrestling and I wanted to have it and I was just extremely disappointed. And then of course there's the eShop side of things. The eShop just seems to be the wild, wild west all of a sudden. Everyone's just putting out crap on the eShop, whether it's good, whether it's bad, no one seems to care anymore. Remember the Electric Love series? You couldn't even play these games if you did not understand Japanese, but they came out on the North American eShop. So there's obviously no sort of quality control. But my buddy 8-Bit Eric likes to play a lot of Switch games on live stream. He basically gets a lot of indie codes in and he plays these games on his live stream. And I was watching his live stream one night and a game popped up. And this game, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why. It really shouldn't have made me mad. And I don't even know why I'm making this video, but the game made me mad. The game made me very angry because it was like literally the worst game I've ever seen in my life and I know there's gonna be a lot of people that are questioning my thought process on this but I feel like I have some good answers the name of the game is called little shopping and obviously this is not a game designed for me but they obviously sent Eric a review copy so they're open to criticism and reception with this game so today we're gonna to talk about little shopping on the Nintendo switch because this game it, it's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life hey RGT 85 hey Sean oh my god it's Stevie Richards So before we take a look at Little Shopping, the actual game, I want to show you guys the eShop listing for it. This game is $1.49, and I purchased it myself because I wasn't going to ask for a review copy for $1.49. What is the point of that? But I want to look over this listing with you guys and just read over some of the things and talk about what I feel about them. So looking at the listing, play and learn how to count. Simple game for toddlers and preschoolers. Now I know what you're saying to yourself. RGT85, why are you reviewing a game and talking about a game that's designed for toddlers and preschoolers? preschoolers that are playing a Nintendo Switch. But I want to ask you guys something. Now, I obviously am not a parent. I do not have any children that I know of. There was that one time, but she she swore it wasn't mine. She swore that she was with another guy at the same time. So, I mean, I wasn't going to argue that, but obviously I have no children of my own. But if you have a child, are you allowing your preschooler and your toddler to play your Nintendo Switch, your $300 Nintendo Switch device? Let's be honest. Nintendo makes high quality products, but the Nintendo Switch is kind of a delicate system. You know, it has this glass screen on it like if I dropped it as it is I wouldn't feel very comfortable about dropping it are you allowing toddlers and preschoolers to play on this device and then even going deeper into this I'm thinking about when I was in preschool I was in preschool ages three to four like most children were what was I playing when I was this age was I playing games like little shopping no I was playing Super Mario Brothers because things like this did not exist Super Mario Brothers was the game that a lot of us played as small children and scrolling down, it starts to repeat itself. It says, for beautiful shops, it is a great opportunity to learn numbers, features, great way to play a virtual store, play and practice counting, simple controls, tap and drag items, fill your virtual shopping cart, put your products on a desk and pay with virtual coins. No risk, no ads. So obviously this was probably a mobile game, which is what I feel like this was inherently designed for. Obviously if there's touch and dragging, you could play with the touch screen on it in order to purchase these items and use your virtual coins, but it just seems very silly to me that this mobile game has been ported over to the Nintendo Switch. Now, of course, we actually have to play the game, and that's where things, oh, that's where things just get really, really fun. All right, so let's jump into the world of little shopping here. You can see we have a absolutely hideous icon that doesn't really tell us anything about the name of the game or anything. It just has a very, very scary looking lady. But, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm sure the budget for this game wasn't very high. But, you know, okay, so we're already thrown into the game. There's, there's no sort of title screen, no sort of information, and we are now playing Little Shopping exclusively, I'm assuming, for the Nintendo Switch when it comes to consoles. We see that we have four shops that we can choose from. We have the 24-hour Apple Store. We have a toy store that we do not know the hours of, so it's going to be you know, a little bit hectic going in there and shopping for toys. Uh, we have a clothes store as well. 
and we have a pet shop. Now I find it interesting that a toddler is going around purchasing pets, clothes, toys, and apples from the Apple store without any sort of parental supervision. You know, obviously this child just has money of their own and they're walking down the street. I mean, it is a nice street. They have street lights, um, but I'm not seeing many people out there. So I don't know, it is kind of sketchy. Now what's interesting is you can sort of see off to the side here that there's something going on. There's some sort of construction going on. Now you can't actually move there, but you can sort of move the camera around with the other analog stick and you can see that something is coming soon. What is this? A fifth store? So this really leads me to believe that yes, this is indeed a mobile game and you probably have to purchase other stores because the game clearly said that there were only four stores available and we've already seen the four stores. So what is this mystery fifth store? Is it an S&M store? Because obviously we're just letting this child go out there and purchase things on their own and you know, who knows what's going to be built there? We really don't know. And so, I, you know, it's a little, it's a little sketchy to let your kid walk around this street and purchase these items. But let's go into a store and do a little shopping. All right, and, and here, here we go. So we, you can see in the bottom corner, we have a shopping list and we need to get these different items and then purchase them. So our child is buying some flour. So we go down to the flour, we hold down A and then you insert it into your cart. We have some carrots, so let's put the carrots in there. And then we have, I'm guessing this is a pepper. So flour, carrots, and pepper, I can't really think of anything that would you know, make a interesting meal out of that. But then again, I'm not really a chef. And we have our three items. So there we go, we have purchased our items and the little weird Christmas guy comes back along. And here's the lovely lady that's available on the icon of the game that will be taking our order. Now, what I find interesting about this is it's pretty much self-checkout because you have to hold A and scan your items across. So why is this lady even here if it's just self-checkout? You're that lazy, you can't even reach across and grab my items and properly check me out of this store? Uh, you know, it just, it doesn't set a good precedent. So you can see we have some coins here. We have a one coin. We have, I'm guessing this is a two coin. Let's be honest, it really looks like a Z more so than a two and then a five coin. So here's a five coin for you and a two coin. We did it. We did it boys and girls. We have gone shopping at the Apple store. Now the weird Christmas guy is back once again. What is his deal? I don't understand him. And yeah, that, that's, that's what you do in this game. And I use the term game very loosely because this, this is not a game. Like now we're shopping for toys. We got a weird horse thing a ghetto ass raggedy and doll that at five coins is way too much it's obviously a knockoff thing and then a blue elephant let's put all this in here is it going to be the same lady that's at the other store no she lost her glasses and now her hair is blue but she's still lazy just like the other lady because she is not scanning the items we have to do it for her so what happens if we give her too many coins that's that's kind of interesting no no what do you mean no you're not giving me change back it has to be exact coins like, oh, shouldn't you teach kids about change and exchanging rates and things like that? Like, this is the whole game. And this is a game that's available on the Nintendo Switch. And it just, it blows my mind because I don't see any kid wanting to play this game. I don't see this being a good learning experience for a child. Granted, I'm not a parent, I'm not a teacher, but I feel like the parents and potentially teachers in the comment section will somewhat agree with me. Why am I buying a do-rag? Why, what is this ghetto? <laughs> My child is, this kid is out here buying a do-rag and a skirt and like, what? <laughs> Why is this lady wearing glasses? <laughs> Oh my god, this is the worst thing ever. So we got socks, we got a skirt, and we got a do-rag. I mean, 12, that's not bad, man. That's not bad. I once, I once wore a do-rag back in high school. You know, I didn't wear it very often, but this is, this is little shopping. And, you know, it's obviously not a game designed for me, but I want to end this video with a question for you guys. So I'm done playing this game. Let's get to my question, very rhetorical question, that I want to ask you guys about little shopping. But my real question with Little Shopping is beyond the fact that it is a game for preschoolers and toddlers, and I honestly feel like there's not a lot of preschoolers and toddlers playing this game, beyond the fact that it's obviously not a game designed for me, beyond the fact that it is a game designed for mobile devices, there's one question that I want to ask you guys when it comes to Little Shopping on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Would you ever see this game available on the PS4? Would you ever see this game available on the Xbox One? No, of course you wouldn't. Now, that's not to say that small children do not play the PS4. 
PS4 and the Xbox One? Because I'm sure they do. You know, when my little cousins come over to my house, they're very young and they like to play around on those systems too, aside from the Nintendo Switch. But really, you wouldn't see these games on the PS4. You wouldn't see these games on the Xbox One because they're not quality games. They're not games that are going to sell on these systems. So why is it that the Nintendo systems always seem to get these sort of weird, crappy games that have no business being on there, that are clearly mobile games that are designed for a quick pick up and play experience? Is it because the system is a handheld device? I don't think that's necessarily right because I don't see a lot of parents allowing their children to play this game in, or the system in handheld mode unless they are at a, a, you know, an age where it doesn't really matter, where they wouldn't be using a game like this. So I don't know why we allow these games to come onto the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, the system is for everyone. I get that, but there are games for everyone. There doesn't have to be games tailor suited to a toddler who's probably never going to pick up a Nintendo Switch and play it in the first place. And by the time they get to the age where they are going to play a Nintendo Switch, they're going to be old enough to not play a game like this. So I, I don't know this for some reason, for some reason, this game just completely rubbed me the wrong way. And there's going to be a lot of people that disagree with me. Maybe people with parents are like, you don't know what you're talking about. I let my toddler play my Switch all the time. He's only broken it three times. So let me know in the comment section down below. Is there a market for little shopping? Is there a big contingency of people that need games like this on the Nintendo Switch? Or is it just these companies trying to get a quick buck by using Nintendo systems? And that's why they don't go to systems like the PS4 and the Xbox One, because they know that nobody cares about games like this. Thank you for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making it, even though obviously this isn't a game designed for me. Let me know in the comments section down below. If you have ever played Little Shopping, are you going to pick up Little Shopping? Are we going to get Little Shopping onto the top of the eShop listing? Because I'm talking about this game now, and maybe you're morbidly curious about it. Who knows? But as always, thank you guys for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe, check out other videos on the channel, and as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.